everyone, welcome back. Today I'm joined with Udgar Parsons, the founder of Growing Spaces. And he's going to talk to us today about the features that are built into the growing dome that help to keep this structure warm and what to do if you need a little bit of supplemental heat to achieve your gardening goals. Welcome to the wonderful world of the growing dome. So this is a 26 foot growing dome greenhouse and it is so different from a regular greenhouse. So a regular greenhouse, when the sun shines, it gets hot in the day, but at night it just loses all its heat and freezes. So what we do with the growing dome is completely different. What we do is we capture and store the heat of the sun in the day and then slow down the heat loss at night. So the first place we store the heat is in uh, an above ground pond and this is uh, 1,200 gallons of water. And all day long in the winter with the low winter sun as it tracks across the sky, it's shining on the dark painting surface of the tank and that's all absorbing heat all day long. And it might go up by about three degrees, which you might say that's not very much heat. But in fact, three degrees of heat being released back into the dome at night is equivalent to running one of those 1500 watt ceramic heaters for six hours. So basically we're storing the heat of the sun in the day and releasing the heat at night to stop the dome freezing. So the second way we store the heat is in what's called the undersoil heating slash cooling system. And how that works is that we take the hot air from the south of the dome and blow it through pipes buried in the soil and it comes out beside the water tank about 20 degrees cooler than it went into the soil. And so essentially what happens is all that heat is transferred into the soil and it's stored in this huge mass of soil. And the reason plants stop growing in the winter is that the soil gets too cold. So every day when the sun's shining, we're heating the soil for free. Okay, so now how do we keep the heat in at night? This five wall polycarbonate glazing. Now a double glazed window has two skins and one dead air space. This multi-wall glazing has five skins all close together and four dead air spaces. So it's incredibly insulating. So the heat you've captured in the day, it's released very slowly at night. The second way we keep the heat in is with what we call the north wall insulation. Now, the only time you get sun from the north is in the summer when you've got plenty of heat anyway. So what happens is we allow the sun to shine on this uh, reflective insulation. Some of it goes down into the pond and keeps the pond warmer. But the main purpose is to slow down the heat loss at night by using this Reflectix bubble pack insulation. All right, so the next way we help to keep the heat in is the dome stands on a two foot wall and the nice thing about the wall is snow can slide off to the dome and the snow can build up without preventing solar gain coming in through the glazing. So a two foot wall is great and it's insulated. And also we have an insulating blueboard skirt all around the dome that prevents frost coming down and under the wall. So this is 16 inch wide. So the frost has got to travel 16 inches before it gets into the dome soil. So what we've got essentially is a heated insulated soil bed that enables the plants to grow all winter long. So this combination of capturing and storing the heat Slowing down the heat loss means a growing dome with no extra heating can stay up to 30 degrees warmer on a cold winter night. So they're quite an amazing technology and they've proved themselves over years and years. So the question is, when might you need or choose to add more heat to the dome? Well, the most obvious thing is if you have a lot of cloudy days in a row, the dome is gonna cool down because what we're doing is we're capturing and storing the heat of the sun. But if there's no sun, there's no heat to capture and store. So if you've got a lot of cloudy days in a row, 
and the temperature of the water keeps going down and down, you might want to add some more extra heat. And interesting enough, if you have a period of cloud and storms and snow, often when the sky clears, the temperature really plummets. It's like the warm front is followed by a cold front, and that's when it gets really, really cold. So under those circumstances, it's really nice to have, to be prepared to put a little extra heat into the dome. The other thing is if you have a long, prolonged cold snap, even though it might be sunny in the day, what we've just experienced here in Pagosa Springs is that it's never really gotten warm in the day. It's got into the 30s, 35, and at night it's gone sub-zero. So those are some of the regions you might want to heat your dome. The other reason is depending on what kind of plants you want to grow. So if you're having a minimally heated dome, you might want to grow mainly uh, cool weather crops, frost hardy crops, and there's certainly lots and lots of those you can grow. All the members of the cabbage family uh, do fine in cool weather, the kale, collards, uh, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, they all do great. And then uh, lots of root crops do fine, carrots, beet, radish, they do great. And then lots of leafy greens do really well with cool weather, lettuce, spinach, Swiss chard, arugula, mizuna, tapsoy. There are so many things you can grow in a cool dome. However, some people like to have things like citrus. So here we've got a little citrus tree, and certainly those will survive low temperatures, but they, they're a Mediterranean crop. And essentially in the dome, we create a Mediterranean climate. So it's hot, dry summers and cool, moist winters. So uh, citrus do okay in the dome. But if you've got something like a guava, which is tropical, then you would definitely want to add more heat because tropicals don't like to go below 45. They prefer it to stay above 50, but that entails a lot of extra heat and you may choose to do that or not. So, so those are some of the reasons you might want to put extra heat into your dome. So the most common ways of heating your dome are either using electricity or using propane or natural gas. And the interesting thing is that electricity creates a dry heat, which is very beneficial, but it is almost twice as expensive uh, per BTU than propane or natural gas. But the downside of natural gas, it does give off moisture which can condense on the polycarbonate and you get drips in your dome. So that's the up and side, downside of propane. So we'll show you a little electric heater. This is actually a radiant electricity and a radiant heater. And the thing we like about that is when it's hot, we can put it in front of the tank more or less uh, about between a foot to six inches away and the radiant heat shines on the dark painted surface of the tank and all night long it's heating the water as well as the air being heated so that's a nice little heater the only other thing is to be alert to the plastic liner hanging over if you've got that hanging down here not trimmed off that's not very good at all so you may need to make sure it's trimmed between three and four inches below the pool coping. So there are different types of propane heaters or natural gas heaters that you can use. And this is one of my favorites. It's called a Mr. Heater, and it goes on top of a five pound propane bottle. And the beauty of this heater is that it's a radiant heater. So it's giving out a lot of radiant heat as well as conduction. And so what I usually do is put it somewhere between six inches and a foot away from the water tank so the radiant heat is going onto the surface of the tank. And I've taken temperature measurements and the water can be three or four degrees warmer even on a cold winter night because it's heating all night long. But you do have to be a little careful to make sure that this is not going to get uh, impacted by the heat. So if it was me, I would heat, I would move it a little bit over there because then that plastic is closer to the wall of the tank. So in order to keep the heat in the dome during the day, 
you may want to consider disconnecting some of the automatic windows and you do that in different ways which is described in detail in another another video but for instance this is a lower vent opener and you squeeze the arms to uh, allow it to stay closed to keep the heat in if possible. Another way we keep the heat in is these little vents automatically open and close in the summer but in the winter we usually put a piece of insulation in front of them to stop cold air coming in. Also with the dome comes an under soil heating system whereby we're blowing hot air through the soil beds all day long that heats the soil. But you can do a bigger system which is called a climate battery. So what we do is we excavate like three foot down over the whole dome area and put pipes, black pipes, four inch pipes in a pattern all the way and then cover them with soil and having them going to a manifold on the north and the south side of the dome. So what we're doing is blowing air through these pipes and we're relying on the fact that the ground is at 50 degrees but as we blow hot air through the pipes it warms the ground up and so we get the benefit of that by the, the air being warmer coming out of the pipes than it went in. And the same in the summer, these pipes help to keep the dome cool. So that's called a climate battery system. We've talked about slowing down heat loss from the dome, but we can also add heat in other ways other than using propane and electricity. And this is called a bucket heater. And what we do is we put that in the, directly into the water tank it's a thousand watt heater and if you have it on all day long it can put the water tank temperature by about three degrees but you are using electricity so for those people who are living off the grid very often your batteries are fully charged by 11 o'clock and so this is all free heat going into the tank so that's a wonderful way to add extra heat to the tank is with a bucket heater there are many creative ways to add heat to your dome. And one way that I installed was a huge hot water panel, a four foot by 10 foot hot water panel. There were two of those outside the dome. And what I would do, I would pump anti-threes through the hot water panel, through coils in the water tank. And all day long when the sun was shining, a you know, solar powered pump pumped the hot antifreeze through the pipes and I got the water tank temperature up to 75 degrees, which was a great addition to the dome during a cold winter night. So that's another way you could consider adding heat to the dome. They are fairly complex systems and you might want to involve a plumber or someone who's used to hot water systems. Okay, so here we are on the outside of the dome and this is the wall which is insulated but also this is the insulating skirt and what it, it does, it prevents frost from coming under the wall. So the, the frost has to come down here and all the way along to penetrate the soil of the dome. So this is a wonderful addition if you live in a cold area and we slope it at 10 degrees so any rain or snow can flow away and not go underneath the wall of the dome. So that's the blueboard skirt, which is a wonderful addition in a really cold area. And also this, we've exposed this, but it's usually covered with gravel um, so it doesn't degenerate because it does degenerate in ultraviolet light, so we cover it with gravel. If you live in an area where you don't get a lot of snow, in order to help insulate the wall of the dome to stop frost penetrating, you might want to put an outer bed on the outside of the dome. But in terms of if there's a lot of snow, then the snow builds up on the bed. It will prevent solar gain through the glazing. So you'd have to keep that shoveled. But on the north side, however, you want the snow to build up because it acts as an insulation. So imagine this is all the snow has fallen off and it's up here and that really helps to insulate the dome and keep it warmer. And even snow building up against the polycarbonate is very, very acceptable 
and it doesn't increase the snow load because what happens is there's a minute airspace because heat's always coming out of the dome and it's melting the snow right in contact with the dome so it doesn't make it uh, heavy on the dome structure. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. For more information on winterizing your growing dome, check out the link in our description. We also have a blog post on in-depth heating options if you're looking for more information on that. Subscribe and click the notification bell so that you never miss a video. And go ahead and follow us on our other platforms. We have Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and Pinterest.